In our current world, primary productivity, which is the major first part of all food chains in marine or terrestrial ecosystems, is represented by plants on land and the wide unknown world of the algae groups in the ocean realm. Algae are in fact a polyphyletic group with no real defined common ancestor. Four monophyletic groups are currently known. The first one in which land plants emerge are the Archaeoplastida, composed of the three first monophyletic clades, Chlorophyta, so-called green algae, Glucophyta and finally the Rhodophyta or red algae. Then we have a huge distant group which does not share clear relationships with Archaeoplastida. They are the Straminopiles. This huge last group is related with no algae microorganisms called Rhizaria. They are planktonic and benthic weird shelled microorganisms as the forums or the radiolarians. Among the Straminopiles, we have microsilicious algae widely scattered on Earth and which are one of the most important photosynthetic marine organisms. They are the diatoms with a characteristic silicious capsule called the frustula that could be circular or elongated. The ozoalgal stramenopile are commonly known as the brown algae. They could be gigantic and rule the seafloor of large tidal zones. Among these algae, the Pheophysi have probably the most impressive cladomotalus which is the most complex and derived talus among all the algae. They currently form major marine ecosystems near the shorelines as marine forest-like clusters of laminarias and macrocystis, called the kelp forest. Microcystis can for instance reach a high of 45 meters with a talus floating thanks to pneumatocyst. Red, brown and green algae can be associated in complex communities established in various unstable temperate environments as the algae flora on the foreshore where the tide constrains algal distribution and engender an ecological stratification with laminaria and imantalia at the distal part, Fucus ascophyllum, the green algae alva and red algae like chondrus and mastocarpus at the mid part and upper part. Green algae can also form great marine or freshwaters meadows dominated by ulvaci or carophysi, for instance. An ecological diversity and taxonomic richness that clearly features the algae world. 2.5 billion years ago, Earth marine ecosystems were devoid of macroscopic life. No animals, no plants, no fungi were present in that late Archean time. Suddenly, the marine world was enriched in O2, produced massively by the Archean oxygenic photosynthesis cyanobacteria, which built famous microbial mats and huge biomineralized structures called stromatolites. Due to this great oxygenation event, the old ferruginous ocean began to be oxidized. It was the time of the banded iron formations and was called by the geologists the great oxidation event. Before this great oxidation event, the O2 free ferruginous ocean was a perfect environment for anoxygenic photosynthesis bacteria. With oxidation of reduced iron and sulfids, which were largely widespread. This strange Archean world was almost a barren planet, with an infinite silence rarely disturbed by rains and winds that weathered the bare rock surface. In ocean, First, eukaryotic life began to rise among a cell kingdom, where bacteria ruled with their unique photosynthetic and chemolithotrophic metabolisms. In various sites on Earth, microbial biomineralizations are observed age of billion years. They are stromatolites, 
a huge increase of stromatolites and oxygenic photosynthesis from cyanobacteria after 3 billion years was the starting point of the great oxygenation event. Rapidly, the Archean Oceans was considerably enriched in O2 and eukaryotic life with metabolism which used oxygens thus thrived. Then began the boring billion years, a very long period of the Proterozoic known by the scientists as a great lack in the fossil record of various living lineages. But the use of the word boring to describe this Proterozoic time is certainly not appropriate. Because of a revolution that occurred during this time interval and changed forever the shape of the Earth. Indeed, rare fossils from the Mesoproterozoic era nearly 1 billion years ago give us a glimpse of the beginning of the Eukaryotic Great Diversification that preceded the Avalonian and Cambrian explosion. Among these fossils was described the likely oldest fungi ever found. It is called Urasfera Gerardae, but also the oldest algae even known. This is the holotype of the multicellular red algae Bengiomorpha pubescens, featured by a very complex status that looks like the current Bengia algae. Bengiomorpha, as almost all red algae, can biomineralize calcium carbonates within the cell walls. This process widely favored the fossilization of red algae through 1 billion years of life evolution. But Bengiomorpha is not just the oldest multicellular algae known in the fossil record. It's also the oldest paleobotanical evidence of sexual reproduction. Sex was without doubt a fundamental biological innovation in the life history, which enables the appearance of new more complex multicellular forms. In other words, since sex was born, evolution began to be faster. As you can see here, this tiny fossilized cell is the first phase of the ontogenetic development of this red algae. Current rhodophyta are also characterized by a very complex life cycle with three distinct phases. The gametophyte, the carposporophyte and finally the tetrasporophyte. However, Bengia, which is probably related to the old Bengiomorpha, is featured by a more biphasic cycle, largely dominated by the gametophytic phase. Knowing this, it's therefore possible to argue that this fossil organism corresponds to the gametophyte of the Bengiomorpha. Thus, Bengiomorpha represents a fantastic paleobotanical discovery both for the sexual reproduction and for the understanding of the rhodophytes and Precambrian algae evolution. But during the Neoproterozoic era, another algae group was rising. They were the first chlorophytes. Green algae are very important in our current world because land plants that clearly build and structure the continental ecosystems are in fact the closest relatives to the green algae. Together with streptophytes, which contain land plants and carophytes, they form the chlorobionts. But unlike red algae, chlorophytes have a poor fossil record, which makes it difficult to decipher their evolutionary history. Until Protocladus Anticus was discovered in the mudstones of the Nanfen Formation in China. This old fossilized green algae shows us some typical features like the presence of heteromorphic cells and septums with constrictions, an apical extension and finally many filamentous unicellular branches that floated in the warm shallow crystal clear waters enriched in dissolved dioxygens. Perhaps the sun-drenched seafloor of the Mesoneoproterozoic boundary could be therefore the place where the first chlorophytes like Protocladus thrived and could compose widespread marine meadows. 
Imagine thus the huge amount of dioxygen produced by this algal flora and the tremendous effect they had on the atmosphere. Probably the consumption of CO2 by these algae triggered new global glaciation periods, which occurred 640 million years ago during the Cryogenian with the last known snowball earth. Moreover, this algal diversification likely engendered the neoproterozoic oxygenation event. Birth of algae and their diversification was truly a revolution for the autotrophic lineages and changed forever the shape of the seafloors in all latitudes. 550 million years after, one group of the streptophytes will transform the continent by conquering coasts and deserts. The barren planet will therefore be greening with expansion of the land plants, but this is another story.